Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I was just hanging out with my new friend, a paper jack-o'-lantern that's most likely from the 1940s. He's missing a few pieces, like he probably once had a wire handle that went here, and most likely had a translucent piece of paper that was behind the eye sockets in the mouth that would have been painted with eyes and teeth. But overall, he's pretty friendly looking which is more than I can say for some of his contemporaries, which looked like this, or this, and seem like they were most definitely cursed. I'm Julie, by the way, and I'm a business historian. And today I'm taking a look at the history behind one of the most ubiquitous symbols of Halloween and trick-or-treating, the jack-o'-lantern. Where did the jack-o'-lantern come from? And how long have people been carrying those plastic jack-o'-lanterns while trick-or-treating? The practice of turning root vegetables such as potatoes, beets, or turnips into lanterns with faces originated in Ireland and the Scottish Highlands in the 1800s, seen as a way to ward off unwelcome guests during Samhain, a Celtic festival when spirits walk the earth. But the term jack-o'-lantern dates back further. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, Jack of Lanterns, or Jack with the Lanterns, dates back to the mid to late 1600s, and was used to describe a man with a lantern or a night watchman. Now perhaps more interestingly, it was also another name for a will-o'-the-wisp, a mysterious light that can sometimes appear over marshy areas, possibly due to gases emitting from decaying plants. Now, you might mistake these jack-o'-lanterns or will-o'-the-wisp for a light in the cottage window or a friendly lantern, but you would be wrong and find yourself in a watery swamp. And so, a jack-o'-lantern or will-o'-the-wisp had a perceived supernatural capability to mislead or elude until you were stuck in a quagmire. The name jack-o'-lantern is also often tied to a character from Irish folklore, a rude and ill-tempered man named Jack. As told in the Dublin Penny Journal in 1836, Jack had tricked and trapped the devil. He agreed to let Satan go in exchange for not seeking Jack on earth or permitting him to enter hell when he died. The devil agreed. And when Jack died, he found he could neither enter heaven nor hell, and was instead doomed to wander the earth forever, with only a lantern to light his way. Several versions of the story describe this lantern as being made from a turnip lit by an ember from hell. And such was the legend of Jack of the Lantern. Irish and Scottish immigrants brought the practice of carving turnips to the United States and adapted the practice to pumpkins. It slowly spread across the country, and by the late 1800s, the term jack-o'-lantern was firmly fixed to carving pumpkins and Halloween. Pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns became popular decorations for windows, tables, and fence posts, and were carried by young adults engaged in acts of mischief on Halloween Eve. These pranks range from knocking on the door, or rapping on the window, and running away, to tipping over outhouses, to putting carriages on the roofs of buildings. Some jack-o'-lanterns themselves were part of the pranks, with children jumping out from behind a tree with their jack-o'-lantern to spook passers-by. Though some pranks were regarded as harmless fun, others were viewed as destructive or dangerous. As such, communities around the country sought ways to occupy adolescents on Halloween with parades, bonfires, and handing out popcorn sweets and other party favors. Evidently, these efforts worked. And as Halloween transitioned from a night of mischief and pranks to a night of costumes and treats, the jack-o'-lantern transformed as well. Once a menacing character meant to scare or lead astray, the jack-o'-lantern was now a somewhat comical figure and a benevolent guardian. And once going door to door to beg for popcorn balls and candies became the norm beginning in the 1940s and 1950s, the jack-o'-lantern became a light to guide trick-or-treaters in the dark. The 1950s saw another major change, the arrival of the molded plastic pumpkin. Now, children in the United States had long substituted other household goods for a real pumpkin. Especially in urban areas where real pumpkins might be scarce, children would just take candy or shoe boxes and use that as their jack-o'-lantern. And this had the added bonus of being significantly lighter and easier to carry than lugging around a real pumpkin. Crepe paper, paper pulp, and paper mache jack-o'-lanterns were also popular, but potentially dangerous. 
Tragic stories of paper jack-o'-lanterns and the candle inside causing fires and severe burns were not uncommon during Halloween. A 1924 advice column urged, The goblins may get you on Halloween, but don't for goodness sakes let it be the fire sprites. Guard against that danger by using tiny electric light bulbs in your paper jack-o'-lanterns instead of the customary candles. Sound advice, which I am actually taking with my 1940s paper jack-o'-lantern. I actually stole one of my battery-operated candles from the back shelf there and put it in here. And I don't know how well that's showing up. It does glow when it's dark, but I think it's a little bit too bright in here to see it. So maybe I'll take a photo to show you what it looks like at night. Oh, <laughs> and um, the candle just fell over. So if this was a real candle, we would be in trouble, but thankfully it's not. As manufacturers began mass producing plastic after World War II, it became the cheaper and more fashionable material of choice for all kinds of consumer products, including the Halloween jack-o'-lantern. In the 1950s, references to plastic jack-o'-lanterns filled with candy appeared in newspapers. These candy-filled plastic jack-o'-lanterns seem to be intended as gifts, party favors, or prizes for children. Because they came with candy included, it seems unlikely that they were intended for trick-or-treating. These candy-filled pumpkins were followed by advertisements for plastic jack-o'-lanterns complete with light bulbs, batteries, and plastic handles to make a wonderful light to carry on trick-or-treat visits. These battery-operated plastic jack-o'-lanterns would have been safer than their cardboard, crepe paper, or paper mache counterparts, and children could leave the candles at home. It's not clear from sources when exactly kids began using these plastic pumpkins to carry their candy in while trick-or-treating. In 1967, the Bloomfield, Illinois newspaper The Pantograph noted, Children will get mom to give them big brown paper bags to put their goodies in. Some kids will even buy things at the dime store to put their loot in. Things like plastic jack-o'-lanterns with handles. A newspaper ad from the same year states, Durable plastic and colorful jack-o'-lantern. Just the thing for the big spooky night. Also can be used to carry candy in. So we know that at least some children were using plastic jack-o'-lanterns to carry their candy in the 1960s. By the 1970s and 1980s, plastic jack-o'-lantern carriers had taken off praised in advertisements as being both decorative and functional. Children lugging plastic jack-o'-lantern buckets to collect their candy bars were soon as much a fixture of Halloween as real jack-o'-lanterns. Perhaps indicative of what a cultural touchpoint these plastic jack-o'-lantern buckets had become, fast food restaurants like Kentucky Fried Chicken, or KFC, and McDonald's began offering their own versions free with the purchase of a meal. In 1976, KFC's free jack-o'-lantern carry-all could fit a bucket or barrel of Kentucky Fried Chicken in it. Beginning in 1986, McDonald's gave out pumpkin pails with the purchase of a Happy Meal. These pumpkin pails were made with handles and lids, and originally came in varieties McBoo, McGoblin, and McPumpkin. These pumpkin pails were extremely popular, and a kid's social worth might be measured in whether or not they had a McDonald's pumpkin pail on Halloween. According to journalist Daniel Finney of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, these pumpkin pails made hauling your Halloween candy in a plastic orange jack-o'-lantern trendy. One of the things I remember vividly growing up is that the jack-o'-lantern treat bucket didn't actually hold that much candy. You would be much better off with a paper grocery bag or better yet, a pillowcase. According to the California Milk Processor Board, the average jack-o'-lantern treat bucket holds about 250 pieces of candy. Now compare that to the pillowcase, which the Daily Burn blog says holds about 1,690 pieces of candy. Personally, I would go with the pillowcase. But there's no arguing that the jack-o'-lantern treat bucket is here to stay. It's even evolved. You can get it in any color you could possibly imagine. You could even get one shaped like your favorite Disney, Paw Patrol, Minion, or superhero character. Today, the jack-o'-lantern bucket remains one of the most iconic fixtures of Halloween and trick-or-treating, and part of the multi-billion dollar Halloween industry. As for this charming fella, he will be in my window this Halloween. Hopefully he doesn't scare off any trick-or-treaters. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you'd like to learn more about the history of ordinary things like the jack-o'-lantern, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel below. Thank you again, and I hope you have a happy and safe Halloween.